El Jefe here. We call him El Jefe, double A, the man, the legend, um, a best friend, uh, uh, a hero of mine and of Tim's and of pretty much everybody here, <laughs> a lot of people here in this room. This is Andrew Arnold. And uh, Andrew is ex executive director of uh, Solid Rock Outdoor Ministries. And many of you know about SROM. And uh, Andrew and I have been journeying now for a lot of years. Um, started in 2000. We actually were roommates. And uh, I remember the days when Andrew would wake up in the middle of the night, walking around and talking in his sleep. <laughs> like, Andrew, go back to bed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From roommates to, uh, you know, uh, brothers um, in the spirit and then <laughs> in the natural. Um, I married his sister. We, uh, we worked for SRAM. We've been working for SRAM for 12 years now and took SRAM from a garage, backyard, little uh, ministry. And now it's really grown and we're trying to offer and make it an asset to the body of Christ. But I want to take a minute and introduce Andrew. Um, he's going to be telling us a little bit about SRAM because SRAM is a big piece of Rock Laramie and Rock International. And we really want to be, we, it, the big picture with SROM is we want SROM to be an asset to the body of Christ internationally, but particularly for this spiritual family, we want to utilize this beautiful tool we have for our young people, young adults, to make disciples that make disciples and learn how to d take dominion in every sphere of life. And so give Andrew a hand. Bro, it is a blessing. It's an awesome honor to be here. I remember, I actually was trying to remember when we first came to kind of a mini tribal in Kansas City uh, years ago, and it was very catalytic uh, in our lives, in the life of my family, my wife and I, Amy and Josh, other people that were really part of the core to say, well, God, we don't really know what we're doing, but we want to, we know that this is right. We know that what we're hearing is hitting our hearts, and we have to respond to it without really a game plan. Well, I shouldn't say that, but without really a confidence and a clarity about what we were doing. And so we met Tim and Janet years ago, seven years ago, I think, on, a, uh, on the beach in Jackson Lake uh, below the Tetons, which is an incredible place. As, as in, if anybody's seen it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And um, we struck up a conversation of, hey, you know, like, kind of like, what do you do kind of thing? You know, like the typical American question, like, how are you? I'm fine. What do you do? Um, little did we know, it was like, you know, that little crack in the door, Tim just kind of kicked that open. It was like, well, if you really want to know. <laughs> no, he never does that. <laughs> but it was like, wow, we don't understand everything you're saying per se in in the sense of like we we catch it by revelation and we need to respond to that and so that was seven years ago and it really opened the door for what was really some of the beginning conversations of forming this spiritual family in Laramie and connecting us to a larger spiritual family um, with similar values core values core vision strategy mission um, in other locations like Kansas City and El Paso and Grand Rapids and many of the people that are represented here. So I, that was the Lord seven years ago, and we met Tim and Janet and um, began to build a relationship with them. And why do I say all that? Because <clears throat> Tim and Janet and Rock International and Mono and Lori and other key leaders have been really instrumental in helping us as a spiritual family in Laramie, but then also helping us catch a larger vision for strong Solid Rock Outdoor Ministries, and helping us understand that um, the original vision of my dad of these points of light around the world um, in many ways can represent, quote unquote, sons of light that carry a certain DNA from heaven, a certain DNA from the kingdom, from the king and the father that can be deposited, so to speak, in the hearts and lives of young men and women. And the reality, guys, and we say this in Rock Laramie and Rock International, it's kind of a phrase, it's a, it's a way of thinking that says, you know, the way, um, the way out is often the way, uh, how do, now, now I'm having a hard time with, with the, the phrase, but the way we were, I guess, messed up 
is often the way we get unmessed up. So it's paradoxical. Like the way we got into the where we're at as people is often the way we get out of it. Meaning, really, how do, what does that translate? It translates to family. Because many of us, not all, I don't want to create that broad of a brushstroke, but many of us, the hurts and the pains and the dysfunction we carry in our lives was because oftentimes of the hurt and pain and dysfunction of our families. Fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, whoever that may be. And so we carry this. And it's like we, we go our whole lives almost off bubble and we don't even know it. <clears throat> and until you can get around healthy family that can help you get healed and whole by the Spirit through love and revelation, you don't even really, you don't even have a context for what you don't have. You're an orphan. We, we'd call you an orphan. Uh, I mean, we love you, but you act, you're acting like an orphan. And um, why do I say all that? Because part of what, the, what, what we're wanting to do through SROM is create a context where people can get a taste of family, father, and the kingdom for the first time. And an and aha moment comes on that says, this is what I've been longing for. This is where I belong. This is how I can get unstuck. I can be healed and whole in the context of spiritual family. So we use this analogy, and we're starting to understand this more and more, is really SRAM is creating a context where we can, quote, set the table, so to speak, for people to come to the table in the wilderness and experience a sense of the Father and a sense of belonging and a sense of the King and the Kingdom and, and that DNA that comes from the Father, from the King, by the Holy Spirit. They get a taste of it in the context of wilderness and they say, I don't know, I, I don't fully understand what it is, but I, I want more of it. And then we can say, well, if you want more, we can connect you to a family in Laramie. We could connect you to a family in El Paso. We could connect you to a tribe in that, that God is raising up around the world in this nation where you can continue to grow with this DNA, with this revelation, and with this um, context of family, spiritual. So the, the table analogy is really one of family. I mean, if you think of a table, it often brings, a, it often brings back memories of family, dinner time, meal time, connecting. There's a, ideally, not always, but in the ideal setting, there's a mother and a father, there's a family, and you're connecting and communing around that table. Now, most of us, a lot of us, especially the young people we minister to, that, that has been wholly broken, completely devastated by the spirit of this age, by just like a demonic onslaught to destroy and deconstruct family. So a lot of these kids are coming, and they don't have a context of what it means to sit at a table look at their father in heaven, look at their brothers and sisters, and feel like they belong. It's like, wow, I, I, I belong. Like, I'm not alone anymore. I, I, I'm known, and I can be known. And so Strom's trying to create that context for people in the wilderness. And we use a lot of different activities and rock climbing and backpacking. But what's my point? My point is we want to come alongside a church planning work and a family, or a church planning work that has that same paradigm of family, where we can come in the context of, of a house church or a kingdom family and begin to experience that sense of belonging and knowing and growth and discipleship that happens one-on-one -on -one with brothers and sisters in Christ, mothers and fathers in the Spirit, and a family that says, hey, regardless of how broken or jacked up you are, we, we, we receive you, and we want to help you grow. So what we're trying to do on a, on a SROM course is a taste, so to speak, of that, and then say, hey, there's hope for where you're going back to. We can either be a context to help you grow, or you can actually get plugged in Laramie or El Paso or somewhere else to continue to grow. So we're trying to come alongside what the Lord is doing here, in um, this larger work of Rock International, which is really less of a, about a label and more about DNA, core values, vision, strategy, than it is a name per se. But it's something God's doing around the world. 
around the U.S. and around the world, it has different names, it has different titles, but it, he's raising up spiritual families with common DNA, common vision, common values, so that, so that um, you know, he can raise up disciples in the context of family. And so we want to come alongside that. And so when we met up with Tim and Janet over the process of seven years, said, hey, we want to align with these values and vision so that there's less of a transition from someone coming off of one of our wilderness courses and moving into a spiritual family. Because we want to, we want to somewhat align with that. It's two different organizations. It's two different ministries, per se. But there's, a, there's an alignment of vision and val- or values for DNA, so to speak. And um, so we, so I guess why am I talking about that on the first night of tribal is because it's not so much to sell SROM. That's really, that, that actually makes me somewhat uncomfortable, to be honest. It's more to catch a vision for how what God is doing it's in, in this wilderness ministry called SROM and what God's doing in Rock International and even the world um, internationally is raising up spiritual families and SRAM is a, almost an inroad or a, a doorway into that conversation, into that context. It's a catalytic, like, door you, you, that students can walk through and say, okay, I've tasted and I've seen and I want more. And, and that's really what we're trying to do. And not every student's going to catch that. Not every student's going to say, hey, I want to be part of a spiritual family. I want to, you know, get healed in the context of a, of a bona fide spiritual family in my you know, my hometown, but many will, and more will as this continues to grow and develop. There'll be more students that say, wow, I've got, I want more of that DNA. I want more of of what I tasted. How do I do that? Where do I go? What do I do? How do I start that? And so really, um, that's why there's this alignment, and um, it's less about SRAM and more about what God's beginning to do nationally and internationally and how we're wanting to come alongside that. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, we're providing this opportunity to go rock climbing and do the day hike and the peak ascent. Not so much, yeah, we want to go have fun and experience God's creation, but we want people to start catching a little taste, a little vision for what s- these students are experiencing on their seven-day courses, their 10-day courses, their 20-day courses, their 40-day courses. Um, to say, okay, now I, I get a little picture of this. So SRAM is simply a context for a lot of what we're aiming for in this church planning work and, and what we're aiming for in our different locations and localities. So that's just a brief little introduction. Um, jo- where's Josh? Josh, you want to add on anything there? No? Okay, cool. So uh, Tim, Tim and Josh just want to give me a chance to kind of lay that basic broad brush stroke and then you know have conversations throughout the week and invite people to be as much a part of what God's doing at SROM because it's it's part of what God's doing at Rock International even a bigger picture for around the country and the globe so I, I, I guess so yeah I don't know what we got planned there Jesus used experience education, and that's what SRAM does, is we use experience education to reach people for the kingdom. What SRAM is about is getting people out of their comfort zone and teaching them about who God is. And um, if I wanted to go like on a week long or something, I could do that back home, but I really wanted to kind of push myself a little bit farther. There's four core values of SRAM, the glory of God, the kingdom of God, father and family, and the nations. What we're trying to do is bring the father glory. It's not about SROM, it's not about wilderness adventure, it's not even about increasing our knowledge of Christ, but to bring him glory through divine human encounter in the wilderness and making disciples, the sons of light, essentially um, infiltrate the nations for his glory. Glory! We're going to start letting you guys step into your LOD positions, leader of the day, okay? So the LOD is always going to be in charge, basically, of assisting the instructor throughout the day and facilitating the group. So if you have questions, you're now going to go to the LOD. So the instructors will form the LOD, LOD informs everybody else. We want to 
have a vision beyond just a 40-day wilderness experience or a short course, a, a week-long wilderness experience. The idea is that um, the skills that you're equipped with on a 40-day course are skills that can transfer to the nation. I've really changed. And it's only through God's glory that I've changed. The Lord is preparing all of us for something big, you know, because I don't think anybody would have to go through that physical, like, ruling circumstances. If you know how to survive in the wilderness for 40 days, you know how to go to hard to reach people group in Nepal or the Himalayas of India or places where the traditional church has not been able to reach due to the fact that it's harsh environments. We want people to excel and thrive in those environments and so that's one other component of raising people up to go to the nation. Towards the end of the trip it started to get kind of unreal. Um, it started to, to really click that like we we're going to be going back to the front country soon. It also seemed like it like it wasn't really gonna happen. Some things I expect to happen is just like, be challenged by community. Going into the wilderness for 40 days just to solely seek the Lord um, and build community, um, you're gonna come out changed. We wanna create organic families where people are not just student instructor relationships, but growing in, in the idea that we're connected at the heart level, we're honoring the Christ in each other, and we are seeking to go higher, not relating to each other as people that are part of the Christian religion, but people that are going to be forever in eternity, continuing to seek the glory of God. I just never tire of this dialogue that is going on in the Trinity because God is after a generation of kids that just have been disconnected from eternal eternity, their Father in Heaven, the Kingdom of God, and anything that's relevant. And so one of the greatest magnets and hook learners experiences, adventure, crazy adventure, like you could die a venture. Now you can. But it feels like you could. And so that level of extreme, intense interaction with God's creation, it just, it just, plus being disconnected from electronics. You know, no phone, no internet, no iPod, nothing. Raw, intense God in nature with grizzly bears. That's cool. And God has this way of just zinging right through all the walls of hurt and rejection and, um, and BS and getting right at the heart of that young person and going, I love you. God, God, I love you. I'm for you. I'm your daddy. And I want you. I want you. And I want you in my family. And uh, he just bombards this generation. And so it's, it's an evangelism hook. But it's not just classic evangelism of get out of hell, go to heaven. It's, it's evangelism into the kingdom of God, out of darkness and into light, and, in, and out of isolation and into family. And it's why we're on the planet. And I can't tell you how proud I am of, of Shram and our team and our staff and and what is going on. I mean, they themselves have to go through some intense inner healing themselves and some intense reshaping by God themselves to be able to carry this level of God out onto a mountainside. Because under pressure when you're tired and hungry and you've pooped your 15th time in the woods, you sort of lose your dignity and you sort of lose your ability to posture and pose and be cool. And you either have reality or you don't. And so most of these staff people have had to go through a lot of dealings of God to be able to manage this kind of pressure out there in that kind of wilderness. I'd like the, the, all of that have been related to Shram to just stand up, and we want to just applaud you. just want to applaud you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wow.
So did you catch this merging, this connectedness, uh, this inseparable link that we have uh, with this outdoor wilderness encounter in the context of a planting family? And it's not, again, it's not just about the rock. It's about, um, it's about helping people come into the fullness of the kingdom, whether they're in the rock or not. Okay. Well, we were going to uh, talk about the presence of God tonight. But I detect that we, <laughs> we're late. And I don't want to burn us out the first night. I feel like it's important that we respect our bodies. Many of you have traveled all day long. You put in, some of you, a hard day's work or a half day's work to get here. We've got people literally driving through the night to get here, like at 12 or 1 in the morning. And so, and some coming up tomorrow and even the next day. So um, we've got the week to go on a journey together. But what we want to do is move us from an encountering the presence of the Lord into the people of God and then ultimately into the nations. And um, as you'll see up here, we have a little visual aid, thanks to Bob Seebeck, our, our professional illustrator. And we have a lot of real simple ways to explain complex things because I think if it's not simple, it'll probably elude us. So... Uh, the down love of God, where we encounter Him as Father, the up love of God, we love Him back, the in love of God, we connect with each other, and the out love of God, we go after a lost and dying world. And we want to down up in and out lifestyle, individually, and as in twos and threes, and as missional kingdom families, as congregations, and ultimately that impacts cities, and then ultimately it impacts nations. So you go from the person to people, to purpose. And that's where we're going on this journey this week. We are treating you like a leader and a 